Okay, cool. I think we're good now. All right, so we'll get started. So, <clears throat> so what is GSOC? GSOC is our online international program to get university students involved in open source software development. And we've been doing this, we're now in the 12th year of the program. And right now is actually a really, it's a really important time. Students are applying to be part of GSOC 2016 right now. And that goes on until next Friday at 1900 UTC, which is actually, I think Singapore time is technically Saturday morning at like 3 or 4 AM. So you still do have time to apply as a GSOC student. Um, so you're not too late for this year if you're eligible. So with GSOC, students are working on an open source uh, software project with an open source mentor organization and they earn a stipend once they successfully complete their project. Now the idea is that university spent students are spending their time outside of school, i.e. during their summer break, that to work on um, computer, so computer software that will not only help them with their future careers but also help them with their skill set in school as well. Now some of the goals of the program are to help open source organizations identify new contributors. One of the things that we really find that's the most important part about GSOC is getting new contributors involved in open source software development. We're always trying to get new blood, right? Um, a lot of open source projects become a little stale after a while, and getting new blood and fresh perspective into the programs really helps regenerate the organizations. So that's one of the most important parts of GSOC and GCI for that matter as well. And also you're getting to expose students, these university students, to real software development. So you're working on a real project. You're getting that real life um, experience that you just can't quite get in the classroom environment. So it really is a, a great opportunity for you to learn and for you to kind of push yourself. And the whole time you have a mentor that's there helping you. And the, the part about GSOC and GCI is that these organizations want you to succeed. They want you to thrive in their communities and to become a part of their community and to stay involved in their communities long after the programs are over. So they really are dedicated to making you part of their open source community. They want you to succeed. And of course, because you're meeting so many people in these different um, organizations, as well as you might be attending events like a bunch of people here, um, I know former GSOC students, and you can meet more people at these events. So you're really building a network. And of course, networking is always really important with any, uh, any career. All right, so how does GSOC work? So with GSOC, the open source organizations apply to Google to be involved with the program. This year, we chose 180 different open source projects that students can work with. So there really is kind of something for everyone. We have organizations from you know, biomedical fields to robotics to programming languages to uh, database, uh, database and end user, end user application organizations, security, cloud, kind of everything. So really, there, is, there really is something for you. It might take a little bit of digging to find the project or organization that interests you, but we've tried to make it easier. We have a brand new website that we just launched that we're really trying to make it easier for you to find the organizations that interest you. We have filters that you can use by categories. If you know Python or C++, you can search on those, um, on those programming languages and narrow down that 180 significantly. And so then once we've chosen organizations, what we're what's going on right now is the student application period. So this is probably the most, well, I guess the coding is the most important part of the program, but uh, <laughs> second most important part of the program is for the students to submit proposals to the organizations. Now what that means is that each of these 180 organizations have created an ideas list. This ideas list includes uh, ideas on the projects that they would like the students to work on during the summer. So students go in, look at the ideas list, and go, OK, that looks cool. I want to work on that project. So then what they do is you write a uh, proposal to the open source organization to basically kind of almost sell yourself and your idea um, so that they choose you as one of the students to be a part of their organization for the summer. Now, of course, there, it, this is quite a competitive program, um, but it, 
one of the questions we get asked all the time is, you know, I know a little bit of C++. Do I know enough to um, be a part of GSOC? And the, question, the answer is yes. There really are, as one of the org admins is mouthing yes to me, as I saw you, Michael, um, <laughs> is that you, this is supposed to be a learning experience. You're not expected to be an expert coder. I mean, some of the people that apply are. OK, great. They've been doing this since they were 10. OK, but a lot of people haven't. And that's totally normal. This, again, is a learning process for you as well. And it's also something that's really cool about the project is that the mentors are also learning from you. Um, you're asking questions that sometimes the mentors are like, you know, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm going to find out too. So really, it's a, it's a learning process for everyone. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, so once the students submit their project proposals, then, click, the organizations um, will choose students based on the number of student slots that Google has assigned them. So we'll say, OK, organization A, you're going to get five slots. Organization B, you get two. Organization C, you get seven. And so what the organizations then do is they go in and go, OK, I have five student slots. Let's look at all of these proposals we've received. And then they pick the five projects that they think will be the most successful and that they really want to work, um, for the students they want to work with for the summer. And then they select those students. And those students will be announced in April, on April 22nd. And at that time, the students will also be assigned at least one mentor. Most of the time, there's usually two mentors, kind of a mentor and a, prime, and a, and a backup mentor that will be assigned to help them throughout the summer. So again, that mentor is there because they're going to help you in the community bonding period. So once students are selected on April 22nd, from April 22nd to May 23rd, there's a community bonding period. You're like, OK, what does that mean? So what that means is that's when your mentor, you're getting to know your mentor. You're getting to know the organization. You're getting to know how they communicate with one another. You're learning about the code base. You're reading up on the documentation for the organization. And you're also um, working with your mentor to make the milestones and deadlines for the summer program. So then, OK, community ponding period's passed. Great, uh, you've done a great job. So then you would, at that point, you would earn $500 um, as part of your er the early stipend. And then you start coding. You start coding on May 23rd. And then you code for the next 12 weeks. So from, from May 23rd till the end of June, more or less, um, that is kind of the first half of the program. So after that ends, after the mid, there's a midterm evaluation that happens, sorry, about the end of June. And at that point, you're like, evaluation, is there some tests I need to take? No, it's not really what it is. It's actually a very short kind of survey that uh, Google asks both the mentor to complete and the student to complete. And we ask the student questions like, you know, how, how was your communication with your mentor? You know, they're very simple questions, very, most of them are multiple choice, so it's very quick and easy. And then for the mentor, we ask them, OK, how was your communication with your student? And should the student pass or fail? And, and so if the, student, if the mentor says, oh, my student's doing a great job. They're meeting all their milestones. They should pass. Great. OK, then at that point, the, all the people who pass the midterm will receive another 2250 US dollars. All right, and then phase two of coding starts. The last half of the program will, be, will start. And once the last half of the program starts, or begins, sorry, at the end of August, uh, from about August 15th to August 23rd is the final week of coding. And at that point, the students are not only um, kind of writing tests for their code, they're kind of scrubbing their code, they're doing documentation, they're doing their final evaluation of their mentor, and then they submit their code for review, and then the mentor um, says, okay, this student passed or they failed. So if you pass, you get another 2750. So if you successfully make it through the program, you've earned 5,500 US dollars. So the other question we get a lot is, am I eligible? We've had students that are 14 year old, years old who have great experience and they're like, I want to be a part of GSOC. But sorry, you have to be 18. <laughs> it's a legal requirement. We can't, make, we can't make any exceptions to that. So you do have to be 18 and you have to be enrolled in a university program. Um, so as of as of April 22nd when we announced the students. The other part of that is, or you can be, not only, if you're not enrolled, as long as you're accepted into a university program for the summer or for next fall, so you know you start school, say, September 15th or whatever, that's okay too. 
you just have to pro provide proof of that, ex uh, that school acceptance. And then, of course, you need to be eligible to work in the country that you are, or eligible to work in the country that you uh, reside in. So some quick statistics before we move on to GCI. Again, this is the 12th year of the program. So over the last 11 years, we've had over 11,000 students from 103 countries that have been accepted into GSOC. That's a huge number of students to you know, start working in open source. Well, some of the students had some experience before GSOC in open source, but many, many, many students, this is their first, uh, you know, their first time to even learn about open source or even know what it was. So it really is kind of a cool, a, a cool program. And the countries with the most students over the last three years are the US, India, and Germany. And we've had approximately 50 million lines of code that have been produced by students during the last 11 years of the program. And I mentioned a bunch of these, uh, these dates earlier, but right now, again, we're in the student application period until March 25th. On April 22nd, we announced students. Community ponding periods, April 22nd to May 23rd. And then three months from the May 23rd till uh, August 23rd, students will be coding. And August 30, we 30th, we announce all of the uh, student projects that were successfully completed. And there's a bunch of links here. Really, the only one you need to remember is this top one, g.co slash gsoc. GSOC stands for Google Summer of Code, obviously. Um, and that, at that site, you can find links to the student manual, which is a really important thing to read. We highly encourage students to read it. It's, when you say manual, you think, oh, it's like 100 pages. It's not. It's basically each chapter is one page. So um, you could read it all in less than an hour. But even if you just read a couple of sections like how to create a good proposal, that's the most important thing, especially for this week. Um, so just go in and look at it. Read a couple of chapters. Again, chapters are like a page, so it's not. Read a couple of pages, let's say that. Then, um, then you'll have a better idea about how the program works. And we're going to move on to Google Code in real quick here, so I can stay on time. So how many people know what Google Code in is? OK, a lot, uh, yes, <laughs> the people wearing the t-shirts, yes, OK. Um, a lot less of you know about Google Code in. Um, and we expected that. This is, we just wrapped up the sixth year of Google Code in in January. And it basically came out of the idea that we realized how great how successful GSOC was, and we said, you know what? Why don't we try to get students who are even younger interested in open source software development? Not, don't wait until they're university students, but let's get them excited about open source when they're 13, 14, 15 years old. So Google Coden was born. So Google Coden, um, some people call it a mini GSOC. You can kind of think of it that way, I guess. Um, it's an online global contest for 13 to 17 year old students around the world. And it's for pre-university students, so which would generally be what's called different things in different parts of the world, high school or some, some places they call it a college, um, not in the US. Um, but it's an introduction to open source software development for these teenagers. And students also have the opportunity to work with a real open source <laughs> software project and gain real world experience. And they earn prizes for their work. And this is a seven week contest that goes on generally from either late November to early, slash early December to mid-ish or late January every year. We vary the date slightly, but that's generally the timeline. And so how does GCI work? Sorry, I'm gonna call it GCI, it's quicker. So how does GCI work? Basically, starts out the same way organizations apply to Google. We say, okay, these organizations are gonna be the ones working with students. And this year, we or in 2015, we had 14 organizations working with students. And the organizations create small, smaller tasks for students to work on. Like they create hundreds and hundreds of tasks for students to complete. And these are bite-sized tasks. Tasks. They're more like uh, three to five hours to complete versus an entire, you know, GSOC is one entire project that takes a whole summer to complete. And again, just like with GSOC, you do have at least one mentor assigned to each of your tasks. So if you're going along and you're trying to complete a task and you get stuck, then you just ask the mentor, whether it's on IRC channel or through the web app, um, how to complete the task where you're like, I'm stuck here, what do I do next? 
and they're there to help you. And again, the, men the mentors, this is something that is very true for both programs. The mentors are the lifeblood uh, of this program. They're the heart and soul of why GCI and GSOP work. The mentors volunteer their time. They're not getting paid to do this. They do this because they want more students to learn about open source and to learn about their communities. And they want them to get excited about open source and, and just computer science in general, for that matter. And they spend hours and hours. With GCI, some mentors spend you know, 10, 20, up to 60 hours a week <laughs> on top of their normal day jobs um, for the seven week contest helping students because they want, they, they feel such, you know, I guess it's so rewarding for them. That's what they tell us time after time. It's so rewarding for them to see these students, these young students, and these young minds just kind of just excel and to just kind of explode with going, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I really love this. And we've noticed with both programs, a lot of students have been students, and then the next year or a couple years later, they go on to become mentors. So it really is great to kind of see that pay it forward attitude from the students for GCI and GSOC. Um, so kind of to continue with the workflow, the student selects a task that looks interesting to them. No one's assigning a task to you. You get to choose the task that you want. So you say, okay, this task looks interesting to me. You choose it, you work on it, you submit it for review. If it looks great, if it looks good, the mentor says, okay, wonderful, it's been accepted, approved. You can move on and complete another task if you want to. You don't have to. You complete, complete one task, great. Then you get a digital certificate. You complete three tasks, you get a t-shirt. And then we have other prizes for finalists and grand prize winners as well. I don't know if I have time to go into that, so we'll just skip over it for now. You can ask me about it later. Um, and then, one of the things people are like, well, why, I'm a, I'm a high school student, why would I want to participate in GCI? What the, the students tell us time and time again is that they don't think they're that good at coding. They're like, eh, I'm not that good. And then they start doing these tasks and they realize, oh, I know how to do this. I, I do get it, okay. And so you're really building their confidence. And not only that, but also a lot of students Take this, op take this opportunity to learn. And you know, the mentors want to help you learn. So they really realize, oh, this is my chance to have the help from somebody who wants to help me, kind of in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And they learn new skills. So when you're learning these skills when you're 13, 14, 15 years old, that's, that's definitely going to help you. Whether you go into a CS career or not, a lot of these skills are transferable across, um, across uh, different job jobs throughout your life. So you, earn th you learn things like distributed development, working collaboratively, both things that you're probably going to need in almost any job you go into later on. With uh, specifically to coding, learning version control is huge. Um, that's one of the things that students, the GCI students tell us time and time again that they really didn't know much about. So they learn that <laughs> pretty quickly with GCI. Uh, and you also learn how to, do cre to create patches and many other different skills. And you also learn the importance of community involvement. You know, again, open source is all about community. So having a community of developers that want to help you succeed, and it's not just the mentors, you know, it's also other people in, their, in the communities for these open source organizations that are helping answer your questions on IRC. It's often other students who technically you're kind of competing against who are actually helping you as well because they know the answer and they're like, okay, well, I can help this person, which really goes to show the, the kind of the spirit of GCI and um, why we really love to run this program. And we also, because open source software isn't just about coding, we decided to create different types of tasks for students to work on. So there are five different categories. There are coding tasks. There are documentation and training tasks. We have user interface tasks, outreach and research, and quality assurance. So say you like to um, create videos. You could create a video for a training video on how to use some aspect of the software. Or if you're into design, then you could be designing logos or flyers or helping with the UI for the website. So there really is something for everyone. There's tons of, again, we have thousands upon thousands of tasks that are available for students to choose from. You just have to kind of go through and find what looks interesting to you. And some quick statistics. Um, this, again, was our largest contest yet. 
Uh, it was the sixth year of the contest. We had 980 80 students from 65 countries participate, and they completed uh, 4,776 tasks. It's a huge number of tasks. And of the 57% uh, of them completed at least three tasks or more. Thus, they at least got a t-shirt and their digital certificate. And one of the stats that's been going up year over year, we had almost 21% um, female participation this year, up from almost 18% last year. And so we're, obviously we want to keep that, to keep that going up, but we're pretty excited to finally be in the 20, 20, 21% range. So maybe next year we can be at least 25%, 30% would be awesome. And uh, we had 347 mentors from 55 countries that were helping the students during the contest. Now some more Asia-centric statistics. Uh, 461 students from Asia uh, completed tasks in the contest. So basically almost half of the students that successfully completed tasks were from Asia. 164 were from here in Singapore. And 147 of those were from Dunman High School, which for the third, yes, woohoo, <laughs> which for the third year in a row had the most student participation of any high school um, in the program. So congratulations, guys. Um, and each, I mentioned briefly the grand prize winners, so each organization chooses two grand prize winners, and there were 14 organizations in 2015, so we have 28 grand prize winners. Of those, uh, this year five were from India and one was from Kazakhstan. So um, that's pretty, that was pretty cool. We get to meet all of those students in June on the grand prize trip. And then FOSS Asia has done an amazing job with GCI and with GSOC. And with GCI, they had 1,680 tasks that were completed with their org, which is more than a third of the tasks for the entire contest were completed with FOSS Asia. So that's pretty impressive. <laughs> and they had 59 mentors from around the globe that were helping the students in the program. So congratulations, FOSS Asia. You did an amazing job again. Yes, <laughs> applause, yes. And this is a list of the students, uh, or excuse me, the countries that have participated in GCI over the last six years. Um, I didn't put the numbers in there, just didn't have time, so, but these are the different countries. And uh, the number one link to remember here is g.co slash coden, for, you know, Google coden, so g.co slash coden. We do have stickers up here that y'all can grab on your way out for both programs, and we have some flyers as well that talk about GCI and GSOC. And I think that's about it. And we have pins and these are, they, you don't know, they look weird, everyone's like, what is it? It's a screen cleaner for like your sunglasses or your phone or your computer. They're actually very helpful. Most people go, oh, this is awesome. So, um, but it does look a little weird in the bag. So um, I think I'm, if I stay right on time, I should probably end right now. Um, maybe leave it open for one or two questions since we started a little late. Anybody have a question? Yes. <laughs> the question was, is there a website for people under 13 that can learn coding? There are a bunch of them out there. Um, we don't run a program for students under 13 personally, but there are a bunch of the organizations that we work with, including Sugar Labs, that... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sugar Labs is an organization that works a lot with younger students that I think maybe it starts at like eight, yes, and of course you can learn Scratch as well. So they're, yes, Kat? There's also Made with Code. Oh, Made with Code, yes, Made with Code, um, which has been building up a lot over the last couple of years. So that's one you can check out too. So definitely there are a lot of programs around the world that you can check out for, uh, that are online that you can check out for students under 13. All right, and again, feel free to come and talk to me. I'll be here all weekend. Uh, come and talk to me about GCI or GSOC, and come and get some swag. We don't want to take it home with us, please. So pick stickers, pens, you know, you can, lens uh, cleaners.